I've treated hundreds of patients and trained thousands of healthcare professionals over my 15-year career. And one thing I've learned through that experience is that most people are really confused about supplements or they lack a clear strategy or plan for how to use supplements to improve their health. That's why I created Adapt Naturals. It's a supplement line designed to add back in what the modern world has squeezed out and help you feel and perform your best. Our ancestors' diets were rich in the essential vitamins and minerals and phytonutrients we need for optimal function. But today, thanks to declining soil quality, a growing toxic burden, and other challenges in the modern world, most of us are not getting enough of these critical nutrients. I formulated Adapt Naturals using the principles of evolutionary biology and modern research to fill the nutrient gaps that we face today and replicate the nutrient intakes found in an optimal ancestral diet. Our flagship offering is called the Core Plus Bundle, a daily stack of five products that gives you everything you need each day, from essential vitamins and minerals like B12, folate, magnesium, and vitamin D, to phytonutrients like bioflavonoids, carotenoids, and beta-glucans. You can also order the products in the bundle separately if that works better for your needs. The Adapt Naturals products are made from the highest quality, food-based, or bioidentical ingredients, from cellular and immune health to brain and nervous system support to blood sugar and heart health, we've got you covered. Your supplement cupboard is about to get a lot smaller. We also created an app called Core Reset to help you get your nutrition, sleep, movement, and stress management dialed in. Because no matter how good our supplements are, and they are really good, you can't supplement yourself out of a bad diet and lifestyle. The best part is that you get this app at no additional cost when you order the Core Plus bundle. Head over to adaptnaturals.com, that's A-D-A-P-T naturals.com, to learn more and start feeling and performing your best. Hey everybody, Chris Kresser here. Welcome to another episode of Revolution Health Radio. This week I'm excited to welcome back Tracy O'Shea, functional nurse practitioner. Tracy, as you may know from previous shows, has worked very closely with me uh, over many years, uh, side by side in my clinic, California Center for Functional Medicine, and then more recently as the director of the ADAPT Functional Medicine Practitioner Training Program. And in this show, we're going to talk a little bit more about functional medicine. Um, we have a, a lot of new listeners who are perhaps less familiar with functional medicine, what it is, what it has to offer, how it addresses the shortcomings of conventional medicine. And, you know, most importantly, what it has to offer for both patients and practitioners. Uh, there's been some pretty exciting new developments in the functional medicine space, including uh, functional medicine being featured on the Today Show very recently. And it is also serving as the operating system now for many new telehealth, digital diagnostic, and digital therapeutic startup companies, many of which are venture funded and getting a lot of attention in the media. So it's a really exciting time for those of us in the functional medicine space. And I thought it would be a good opportunity to revisit some of the basics, talk about some of the new developments that are happening in the field. And for those that are practitioners and health professionals, you know, how you can um, get trained as a functional medicine provider. So Hope you enjoy the show. Let's dive in. Tracy, so good to have you back on the show. Happy you could join me. Yes, I'm happy to be here. Thanks, Chris. So it's been a while since we have done a more kind of basic introduction to functional medicine. Um, and Tracy, as you know, we have a lot of practitioners in our audience, um, doctors and other healthcare providers, and also just very savvy people who uh, use functional medicine themselves, they have a functional medicine doctor or clinician, uh, or they're interested in doing that. And it's been a while since we've ha had a show that just kind of covers the basics of what functional medicine is, why it's helpful, um, why, you know, you might want to know about it, whether you're a patient or a practitioner. And then if you're a practitioner, what some of the, you know, how do you actually learn more about it if you're interested? And how do you build a career in functional medicine? So excited to talk about this with you. And yeah, let, let's dive in. Great. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. So, I, you know, I, I would wager certainly our, all of our long-term listeners know about functional medicine. We, we have people joining all the time and 
you know, 10 years ago or even five years ago, Tracy, it was the case that people would ask me what I did and I would say functional medicine. <laughs> they would be like, what's that? <laughs> or, or, or they would think it was something totally different than it actually was, you know, some, sometimes like people had all kinds of ideas, like some kind of physical therapy modality or, um, I don't know what, yeah. what, what, what kind of, yeah. What kind of, yeah, I mean, like, you I think I would always be, yeah, I'd always be practicing my elevator speech to people mm -hmm. of like, okay, how can I not, you know, bore them to death, but they also totally understand and get, you know, what it is that functional medicine is and why I'm so proud to practice it. And, you know, mm -hmm. what's, what's the difference in importance, but yeah, I would get all kinds of, all kinds of stuff, but yeah, things mostly just confused faces, <laughs> um, as I started to explain, but it really feels like things have shifted, you know, pretty dramatically over the next, over the last, you know, few years, especially just the awareness of, um, the need for something different in our healthcare system. And, you know, just the word functional medicine is really starting to become more recognized. Yeah. Well, it was just on the today show. Tracy. I, I yeah. Know. I saw, I saw <laughs> that I was sharing it with literally everyone I knew um, just in case you missed yeah. this, you know, yeah. it's, that's big time. I think. Yeah. In my great. Opinion. Yeah. Cynthia. So this was Dr. It was a feature on Dr. Cynthia Lee, who's fantastic. She is, you know, fellow Bay Area. Uh, of course, now I'm a former Bay Area functional <laughs> medicine practitioner, but she is a fellow Bay Area functional practitioner and um, just a wonderful person and wonderful practitioner. And she wrote a, a great book and and uh, about her own healing journey and and her use of functional medicine and and then what led her to pursue functional medicine as, you know, as a doctor, you know, as a professional, not, not just in her own healing journey, but, but what led her to want to practice functional medicine herself. So, yeah, I mean, now <laughs> you've got functional medicine on the today show, of course, you know, several years ago, I was on Dr. Oz and several other national media programs. So it's come a long ways in the, you know, 25, 30 plus years since, um, since it sort of came together as a, as a modern discipline. And, you know, despite that progress, I think there's still a lot of room to grow. And a lot of people who don't really understand what it is, maybe have heard of it, but they're still not totally sure what it is. So I want to talk a little bit about it briefly here. And because I think it's just so important for us to make the changes that functional medicine offers as a, as a possible approach to the healthcare crisis that we're dealing with. Uh, everybody listening to this knows, I think that chronic disease is on the rise. Uh, we have six in 10 people with a chronic disease now and four in 10 people with multiple chronic diseases. Uh, you know, chronic disease, it accounts for seven of 10 deaths you know, which is really different than it used to be. Like the turn of the 20th century, most deaths were caused by acute infectious diseases or, or, or trauma or injuries. Those were, those were all, you know, really short-term things. Um, as life expectancy has gotten, has increased. And as the modern world with, you know, highly processed and refined food, greater exposure to toxins, less sleep, all the things that we struggle with in our in our day-to-day -day modern lives um, that has increased rates of chronic disease and chronic disease is really uh, eroding our quality of life it's threatening to bankrupt our healthcare system and the conventional medical model as we know it is really woefully equipped to deal with it and I think everybody who's listening to this has had that you know, or most people have had an experience like that, where they've had some kind of complaint, health complaint, they've gone to the doctor and, and the doctor, you know, almost always is well-meaning and, and is doing their best to help, but they're just really not trained to deal with the chronic complaints that kind of <laughs> are really interfering with most people's lives uh, outside of, you know, prescribing a medication in a 10 or 12 minute appointment, there's really not that much more that can be done to address these, these chronic complaints. So this is the challenge we've been dealing with for many years, but COVID has really, I think, exacerbated it and brought it more into the spotlight because we know that the, the risk of a severe, or poor, you know, a very poor outcome with COVID is dramatically increased by 
having chronic conditions like diabetes, obesity, you know, other types of heart or lung disease, et cetera. And so it's not just that chronic disease puts us at risk for a shortened lifespan and health span. It also puts us at greater risk for acute conditions like SARS-CoV-2 and, you know, COVID-19 as a result. So this is really what functional medicine has to offer. It's a much more holistic, patient-centered, collaborative approach, which shifts the focus away from just managing disease after it's occurred to preventing disease, ideally from developing in the first place. But, but if it already is starting to develop, to develop, just intervening at a much earlier stage, it really seeks to deal directly with the underlying or root cause of a health problem rather than just suppressing symptoms with drugs. So one of my elevator speeches, Tracy, that I will sometimes use, and you know, it depends on the context, of course, but there are lots of analogies we can use for functional medicine. Like one is if you have a, a rock in your shoe and it's making your foot hurt, you could take ibuprofen or something like that to deal with the pain, but it would be better to just like, first of all, recognize that there's a rock in your shoe that's causing that pain. And second of all, take your shoe off and dump out the rock. You know, that's really kind of what functional medicine has to offer. And it's the best way to resolve these long-term chronic problems. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I think, um, I love that analogy. It's always like, oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You know, even though it seems like common sense, it's still many, many years of tradition of way that practitioners were trained, ways that patients were trained to accept uh, medical advice. You know, I mean, it's still an uphill battle because it's a system that has been established for a long time. So even though that makes total sense, it, it's still sometimes a hard sell, um, you know, to patients and to practitioners and you and a lot of other um, people within this community and leaders within the community have really just, you know, put a lot of this effort and energy and passion into getting that message across. And so it feels like, like I said, we are making headway, but we still feel like there are opportunities like this to make sure we're just not stopping the drumbeat. And that's kind of what this opportunity is, I think. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about what's missing in the current approach to healthcare. Yeah. You know, obviously we just touched on some of the main points, but one of the uh, things that I really highlighted in my, my second book, which was Unconventional Medicine, which is, you know, really much more about the topic of this show is this concept of disease management. That's, that's actually how, what I, how I refer to our, you know, we, we talk about a healthcare system, but it really is more of a disease management system the way it's set up because it's not doing much to promote health. It's, it's really there to manage disease or, you know, other problems that crop up. And that's, you know, just, if we even just stop there, that's, that's a problem <laughs> because if you are just waiting for disease to occur before you intervene, then you're always behind the curve. And it's already too late. It's yeah. too late. Yeah or it's going to be way harder, right? So let's True. just take type two diabetes as an example. So we know that most people who develop pre-diabetes will go on to eventually develop full-fledged type two diabetes. Once they develop type two diabetes, it's about a $14,000, $15,000 per year cost to the healthcare system it significantly erodes quality of life. It can lead to really nasty complications like neuropathy, retinopathy, you know, even yeah, amputation of limbs. Like it's obviously it's a serious disease. Now we know from research and also both of our clinical experiences, uh, Tracy, that if, if we, if somebody comes into us and they've got high normal blood sugar mm -hmm. and we intervene at that point, it's going to be far easier to return that person to a healthy metabolic state than it will be if they come to us when their A1C is already nine or 10 and their fasting blood sugar is 160. And, you know, that's difficult. We can still make a ton of progress often with those patients, but the interventions have to be far more intensive 
sometimes medication will be required, especially if insulin, you know, the capacity of the beta cells to produce insulin has dropped. There's often significant other comorbidities that have to be addressed and yeah. it's just way harder. Yeah. I was going to say, I mean, if already endothelial damage hasn't happened and vessel damage and organ, I mean, that's kind of the thing that there is even at, at every stage of disease, there are little bits and pieces that are likely irreversible and really difficult to go back and fix. And so not only are you thriving and feeling better and having this kind of, you know, wellness, you know, that you're achieving, but you're also hopefully like preventing permanent damage to all these parts of your body that accumulate. And we have the, th that's, what's crazy to me is like, we have the capacity to do it. Like we actually have the technology and the knowledge and the information to be able to catch these diseases at these very early stages to be able to intervene, but it's just not common practice. And it just blows my mind a little bit, but that's why we're here, but I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. And it's, you know, it's, I mentioned this example of diabetes in the book. So I think it's a really illustrative case where, you know, sometimes one of the critiques you will hear of functional medicine is that it's too expensive. And I'm not talking about from individual people. Cause I, I, I agree that for individuals, it's too expensive right now, and only a small percentage of people can access it, um, you know, for fee for service. That's changing, I think, now and will continue to change. But what I mean by too expensive, I mean like complaints from within the medical establishment or complaints from people who are experts in public health and, and are looking at, you know, is functional medicine a viable model for our, our system in the U.S.? And they say it's, you know, it's too expensive. There's too many tests ordered up front. I look at that and I say, that's absurd because, you know, if we say it's $15,000 a year to treat a patient with type two diabetes, let's say somebody's diagnosed at age 40. And because of our, you know, one thing our, our medical system is really good at is, is, is keeping people alive for a long time, even if they're not healthy and well. So someone with full-fledged type 2 diabetes might still live until they're 80, at least. Let's just say 80. That's 40 years at $15,000 a year. Uh, that's a lot of money, right? That's $600,000 yeah, for that, for just for that condition for that one person. So let's say in functional medicine that the healthcare, if the healthcare system adopted this model and they had to spend, we spent, let's say, Tracy, you know, a thousand dollars on upfront testing and treatment when that person has prediabetes or even high normal blood sugar, and we could prevent them from progressing to type two diabetes, which is totally possible. We do it all the time. <laughs> That's a savings of $599,000. I mean, I, I'll, I'll take that as an investor. That's, that's a really good deal. And it's totally possible. Um, if there is the, you know, the political will and, and the, the infrastructure that can be created around this. And, and I think that that will happen. It's kind of almost inevitable because there's no, what we're seeing is that the current system is just completely buckling under the burden of chronic disease. And some estimates suggest that the, the healthcare system is going to bankrupt the government as, as early as the 2030s, if change, if significant changes aren't made. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that's um, hard to ignore and it's a tough pill to swallow, I think, for <laughs> other people who have been deep set and accustomed to an older model. Change is hard for people. And I want to make sure it's important, I think, for me to say, we're not saying that this model just doesn't work at all. Like it works great, I think, for acute issues, emergency room, surgeons, acts. I for sure want a really knowledgeable surgeon, if something comes out, I'm in a motor vehicle accident, like those needs are there. And the current model does okay with that. But like you said, it's this chronic disease epidemic that it just can't keep up with. So we're not saying it's bad news altogether. And that the training that other practitioners have had is bad or inadequate. It's just not keeping up. And that's the proposal here is to shift the way that we handle chronic illness by changing the framework and changing the model. I mean, that's adapting, right? right? Like that makes sense. We don't need to leave 
Yeah, I mean, conventional medicine has, has made just absolutely almost miraculous achievements in, in, in so many different areas, like restoring sight to the blind, being able to reattach limbs, like uh, some of the innovations in terms of cancer treatment. I mean, it's really just incredible. And we don't have to leave, you know, we're not, like you said, Tracy, we're not suggesting we, we just abandon that and leave that behind. We can take, we can bring forward all of those amazing innovations and um, also kind of incorporate or, or have them exist side by side with a much more holistic root cause based approach to treating chronic disease, which again, going back to what I said in the introduction is the biggest challenge that we face at this point from a healthcare perspective, you know? So that's the best of both worlds where you put all of that together and, you know, we can have much better quality of healthcare and still have all of the amazing achievements and accomplishments of conventional medicine for, you know, acute issues that, that we face. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think, you know, there's advantages on both sides. There's advantages to the practitioners and to the clinicians who are practicing and then there's advantage to patients. So it, it's, a it feels like a win-win for me. I wonder if we should kind of talk a little bit about, you know, where we see how this change can impact both sides of the spectrum and, you know, why we need it <laughs> and, and yeah. how to get there. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, Big changes like this don't happen overnight. There are a lot of factors that make, you know, a move toward a more functional based paradigm challenging within the, the medical model that we have now. And, you know, I, I don't want to go too far down that rabbit hole. Um, you know, obviously financial interests are, are part of it, but it's also just you know, you have a whole infrastructure and system that has been built around certain principles and ideas for, you know, 150 years. And that doesn't mm -hmm. just, you know, pivot overnight. So I'm actually encouraged by some of the changes that we're seeing. You know, you've got Cleveland Clinic Center for Functional Medicine. You've got functional medicine being integrated into the, the models that a lot of new like digital tele, uh, telehealth and at home diagnostic and therapeutic tools are launching with. And I've always said this, I think, you know, uh, functional medicine will just sort of gradually permeate, you know, the, the system and new, uh, new, newer initiatives that are launched will have more of a functional medicine approach and base. And it's not going to be like a big noticeable, you know, one day we wake up and there's a big, there's a news, you know, flash that now we're using functional medicine instead of convent. That's not how it's going to work. You know, it's just going to be a gradual process where, where this unfolds. Um, but it does start with acknowledging that, that what the problems are. And I think that's already happened. Like everyone knows that the conventional model is not working. I don't care whether you're a patient, a practitioner, an allied health professional, like a coach or a nutritionist, a, a, an, a, whether you work for an insurance, a health insurance, you know, company, HMO, uh, you're, you're peripherally involved in the medical field in some way, everybody, that is the one thing that is not controversial in all of this, that I've, I've never met someone who's just, who thinks that our current system is just working flawlessly yeah. and, or, 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 or even very well at all. You know, people can argue about, the solution, but I think everyone is on the same page as, uh, in terms of the problem. And I would say that doctors and practitioners themselves are the first people to realize that. I know, you know, Tracy, you were conventionally trained originally, and mm -hmm. we've both interacted with tons of conventional practitioners, both through the our ADAPT practitioner, you know, functional medicine practitioner training program and just in, in the various jobs and positions that we've had. And I, you know, I'm curious to hear your take, but I almost always the providers that I talk to totally understand the limitations of the system and are super frustrated by them. They just feel a little bit trapped and don't know what to do about it. Yeah, I agree. I think frustration and fatigue um, comes to mind a lot um, when I'm speaking to a lot of other practitioners and clinicians, and also a little bit of fear because 
you've invested a lot of money into your training. I mean, you know, people walk out of um, medical school, nurse practitioner school, out, you know, whatever you name it with a pretty big bill, like, you know, next to their name. And it's always a little scary to, to make that shift, knowing that you still need to support your family and, and to weigh those things. But I think at the end of the day, what kind of comes out at the end is this need for fulfillment and this need to find a career path that resonates with them. And I think that's really kind of what sticks out to me with the practitioner and um, clinician side is that we just, they're tired and they want to spend more time with the patient and they want to feel like their patient is getting better. Um, And that's really a lot of what is driving the decisions for these practitioners to transition from kind of this conventional model to a more functional medicine um, paradigm and having the confidence to do that is the next step, you know, and that's kind of where the trainings come in and, um, allies of, you know, other people that are practicing functional medicine, starting to understand what role you can have in this movement. And then once you are part of the movement, you have this really robust group of community that, you know, continues to push and push and push and is really, you know, helping patients achieve their optimal health. That's the primary goal. So that's, I think what I have seen as practitioners have transitioned in their journey and in their career from conventional to functional medicine practice. Yeah. I've seen something similar and, you know, I I know that one of the, we've talked, we've had podcasts and before, before, and I've written articles about this and I talked about it in the book, the, the rates of burnout amongst healthcare practitioners are just astronomical and growing every year. And we have a, a, a pretty high percentage of um, doctors and other clinicians leaving health, the health field entirely. And this has been amplified during COVID, of course. The, there's a, even a term for it now, the great resignation, um, which po- I think a, a quarter of all medical providers left the field over the last couple of years with no intention to return. That is not good. I mean, we yeah. we, are, we have a shortage of something like forty thousand primary care providers that 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 are needed, and to have a quarter of all medical professionals leaving the field is exactly the wrong direction that we need to be moving in. And I think it's. I mean, I don't know the numbers. You may know that, but if I had to guess, the COVID, you know, vaccine mandates, all of these things were the catalyst to something that was already deeply brewing. I don't, you know, people, there's probably a percentage of people that felt very strongly about some of those reasons and would have left either way. But I think having a baseline level of frustration and already being burnt out, and then you kind of add this extra layer of stress is all they needed to kind of make that, you know, the tipping point. And so it, it's not just this thing that has happened in the last two years. It is this thing that has been happening and is culminating and building. And now here we are, you know, seeing the results of that over many, many, many years of frustration. I agree. So let's talk a little bit about what, you know, what is possible with four practitioners and patients when we move to this model. You know, one one of the first things, I mean, and this was, I know, true for you, Tracy, it's true for me, is you get better results as a practitioner. Uh, you actually are are able to accomplish what most of us as clinicians set out to be able to accomplish, which is to help people truly be able to heal and get better instead of just managing their their disease. Uh, and there, that is so rewarding and fulfilling. And it, it really is why I think most people go into medicine and healthcare is because that's the impact that they want to have on people's lives. And it's super frustrating not to have that impact. And that's what really what leads to, to burnout. So, I mean, that is an absolutely just, it's hard to even put that into words because it's such a game changer. It's the difference between like getting up in the morning and being genuinely excited about going to your job, you know, doing your work and just kind of dreading it. Right. Yeah. I mean, I would be really interested if we had like, you know, just career satisfaction surveys, you know, that you're doing on a daily basis, but a hundred percent, I mean, you can feel the difference. Any practitioner has had, you know, those stretch of days where you're just like, geez, no one is saying that they feel better. No one is saying that, you know, their symptom score is not getting any better. And that is just deflating and depressing to be quite honest. And 
that is the difference, at least for me, that has really shifted is just this recognition of like, oh, it's just nice to hear, (laughs) you know, that someone feels better and that there's this general, nice, beautiful trend of less symptoms, improved health. And you don't get that, that I feel pretty grateful to even be part of that process. So a hundred percent, I think that that's a big piece of this. Yeah. It's, it's difficult to overstate that it makes all the difference in the world. And if, you know, that was the only difference, it would be more than enough, you know? Um, I think another piece of it that's crucial for me is like, and I, and I, again, I think that extends to most clinicians is that uh, functional medicine is a, is an approach where you're, you're always learning. You're always adding new tools. You're always, layering new things in that can further help the patients. And it's kind of, it's, it's deeply satisfying in that way. And of course that's, that can be true if you're a specialist in in conventional medicine or even a primary care provider, that opportunity for continual learning is always there as well. But I think it's what you're learning about and the potential impact that those things can have on your patients that make it even more interesting and fascinating to and engaging, you know, to, to be in the field of functional medicine. That's certainly what I've found. And I have been fortunate to make a career out of that learning and research. Um, but I know many other clinicians that are doing that in different ways, you know, some just on their own and it's just, you know, for their own edification and ability to help their patients. But there are many functional medicine clinicians, of course, that have started their own online platforms and, you know, that are doing group programs and building, you know, their own products or, you know, diagnostic or therapeutic solutions. And it's just really an exciting field with a lot of energy and enthusiasm behind it. And it's, it's really fun and engaging to be a part of that. Vitamin C is a critical nutrient for immune function and antioxidant protection. Yet most people don't get enough in their diet. And most vitamin C supplements contain synthetic forms, GMO, sugar, or allergens like soy or corn. This is why I recommend whole food forms of vitamin C, which contain the full spectrum of vitamin C activity without GMOs or other junk. And my favorite whole food vitamin C product is Essential C from Paleo Valley. It's made with three of the most potent vitamin C rich superfoods on the planet, one of which is 120 times more potent than an orange. Nothing synthetic, no weird questionable ingredients, just food. Right now, they're offering my community an exclusive 15% off discount. Just go to paleovalley.com slash Chris and use the code CRESSER15 to get 15% off. I've been a huge fan of Thrive Market since they launched eight years ago. I love having my favorite healthy products shipped right to my door at a fraction of the price I'd pay elsewhere. I use Thrive to order not only pantry staples like coconut milk, dark chocolate, and collagen peptides, but also toxin-free personal and household products. Thrive makes it really easy to find what you're looking for, whether that's paleo, low-carb or keto, or gluten-free. You can filter by more than 90 values and lifestyles to find what works for you. I also love Thrive's values as a company. They offer carbon-neutral shipping, and when you become a Thrive member, you sponsor a family in need. Join Thrive Market today and get $80 in free groceries. That's T-H-R-I-V-E market.com slash revolution health, all one word to get $80 in free groceries. That's thrive market.com slash revolution health. Yeah, there's so much innovation, which to me is the remarkable part of this. I mean, I think as practitioners, we already kind of have this drive for education and knowledge, but I'm telling you, it it feels like next level for me when I kind of transitioned to functional medicine and started being around a community of like-minded practitioners. I mean, the amount of drive to learn is, I don't know, for me, it's next level. Like every single functional medicine practitioner that I have contact with in my community is constantly learning something new and sharing and applying. And I mean, I don't even, it's just, it really blows my mind how much innovation and how much drive exists within this community of functional medicine practitioners. Yeah, it's, it's exciting. And, and of course, what, you know, what, uh, what also comes with this is more freedom, 
and flexibility yeah. in how you work, you know, like Tracy, you know, you and I have, have been doing this in different ways. Uh, right now, I think you're seeing patients virtually mostly, and yep. you were able to pivot to that quite easily when COVID hit, whereas a lot of practitioners who were um, kind of more stuck in a, in a conventional model were not able to do that. And I think that was part of the great resignation and what happened there. Or maybe they, you know, they switched to some kind of virtual model, but it wasn't something they were prepared for and didn't have systems set up. So it was really difficult. Like a crash course. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, I've always combined patient care with research and training and education and writing and speaking and, you know, like the, the combination of things that I get to do on a, on a day-to-day and week-to-week basis is feels just like an amazing balance, you know, and, and really keeps my, in, me interested in lots of different things and makes it less likely that I'll get, you know, burned out just by doing one particular thing only. And, you know, you can have a lower caseload, like a lot of uh, primary care doctors will be seeing 25, 30 patients a day and have a panel of 2,500 patients in functional medicine, that's, you know, you would never get anywhere close to, to those numbers. You know, you, you might do an initial appointment that uh, for some practitioners, it might be a two hour initial appointment, or it might be an hour, it might be an hour and a half. And then your, you know, follow-ups are half hour instead of 10 minutes. And so you're forming much deeper relationships with patients. You're able to really listen to them and guide them. It just feels way less hectic. And, um, you know, you don't, typically have to work as much to make the same amount of income and you have more time for family and pursuing other interests. And, you know, for me, that was huge. Like that kind of those kind of quality of life pieces were really important, especially as if, as care providers, that's important. You know, we have to be able to take care of ourselves if we want to be able to show up and and take care of other people. And I think that's often, unfortunately, in the you know, doctors really suffer from that, just working insanely long hours and, and then they go home and they're still charting and, you know, where is the time to do research? Where's the time to take care of themselves, be with their families? It's, it's really, really struggle for, for yeah, many doctors. I mean, yeah. I think, you know, we're having to relearn what this all looks like and to, you know, work ethic and, you know, they're, if, oh, if you don't show up and you're not the first one in last one out, you know, then you don't care about your job. I mean, it's just, it's this entire movement and shift in, in the way that we know to practice medicine. And that's what I love about functional medicine and about the programs, you know, that we have is there's still this lingering discussion every time about, yes, but what all, what are you doing for yourself? (laughs) Yes. But also how can you manage to fit this in for yourself? Because this, you have to show up for your patients just as much as you have to show up for yourself. Absolutely. You know, and for the patients, it's a lot, a lot kind of on the, the, the flip side of this, um, where, you know, we talked about one of the, the, the first benefits for practitioners is that you're more effective, right? And you mm-hmm. actually are able to help patients and accomplish the goal, which is to maybe not just help help them manage a, a condition, but actually to completely eliminate that condition, or you know, they can heal from that entirely. Or you know, if they have prediabetes, they go back to having normal blood sugar. If they have uh, IBS, they they don't have it anymore. You know, like this is what's possible, and obviously, you know, the benefits to patients in that scenario are pretty obvious, right? You know, you, instead of spending a lifetime, you know, going to the doctor and, and taking uh, medication, which often tends to increase over time, right? Um, because you, you take a medication and it might have side effects, and then you need another medication for, to manage those side effects. And I'm sure a lot of listeners are familiar with that, um, you know, with how that goes, in this, in the functional medicine model, there's actually the opportunity for, for real resolution of these issues. Now, of course, that doesn't always happen, but there's the real possibility of that happening, which is different, again, uh, yeah. in many cases than the conventional model. And word spreads. I mean, you know, I don't know how many times I've had a patient feel better and then they tell their family member, they tell their friends. And before you know it, I've got like three new patients just because this one person is feeling better and they're living 
you know, this, they're thriving and pretty soon then that patient now has a community of healthy people around them. I mean, it really is this movement that keeps, you know, expanding, expanding, expanding. And at the center is just that increased connection that the additional time that you spend with them and that genuine investment in their health. And they can see that and they get better as well. So it's just, it's remarkable to see. It sure is. And, you know, my, my, my hope is, and I, again, I already see this happening is that, um, this is just going to continue. Well, it's not even a hope. That's a, that's kind of a silly thing to say, actually, <laughs> I'm going to revise that it is happening. Uh, we see it all over, you know, there I'm on the advisory board of, of several new companies that are, that are in the digital, you know, the telehealth space, the digital diagnostics and therapeutics space, you know, you've got like P Parsley Health and Steady MD and Salvo and Clearing and all of these companies that are um, innovating within patient care and medicine. And they're all using a functional model or at least a functionally informed model to, to, to do what they're doing. So that's enormously exciting. And what it means is there's just going to be more and more opportunities for functional medicine clinicians going forward. Like we're, we're, we're just like at the tip of the hockey stick here. If you're thinking about this as a chart. Oh yeah. You know? I can just, I feel all this energy just like waiting, you know, yeah. to be dispersed. So uh, I, I agree. There's a absolutely. huge calling for that. And you know, this is, might sound like it's neither here nor there to some extent from the perspective of an individual clinician, but it, you know, zooming out and looking at, at the, at the market here, like there's an enormous amount of money moving into functional medicine from venture capital and private equity. And, uh, you know, that just tells me that we're, uh, that functional medicine is set to really explode and, and go mainstream in a way that it, it hasn't, you know, it, it, that, that is just starting, but hasn't happened fully yet. And so I, that's the people be with money, incredible. if the people with money start to care, it's kind of one of those. Well, it is. I mean, yeah. it's well, yeah. or it's just a, it's the, it's that they are recognizing that this right. is a, a real thing. It's happening. It's a trend that is not going away. And in fact, it's the future of healthcare. And if you, you know, there's a saying, follow the money, right? So if you, if you see that really savvy, big investment firms um, are investing in this, it, it's a sign that we're reaching an inflection point and that functional medicine is, you know, really uh, moving to a place where it's no longer just a, a kind of niche thing, but it's now, you know, mo moving mainstream and, and serving as sort of the backbone or operating system of a lot of these new innovative healthcare initiatives. Yeah, it's exciting. I'm, I'm excited. I mean, I, I, you know, personally invested in, in the movement of functional medicine because I'm so passionate about it and I'm practicing, but also as the director of the, of our practitioner training program, there's all of this, I see all of this opportunity just waiting to happen. And, you know, we have so many people that have already gone through the program and, you know, people that are still very interested and, and anyways, I think we should talk about the program because I'm just kind of like dying to talk a little bit about, you know, what are the opportunities for people that think that they're ready to make that transition and how to do that. And, you know, what, what is the program in general? Yeah. So, you know, a brief backstory here is when I first started treating patients um, way back uh, over a decade ago. I was so busy so quickly, you know, pretty much right after I graduated from uh, school, my practice was full and I realized that the demand, you know, for functional medicine providers far outstripped the supply. And, you know, it wasn't long after that, that I decided to create the ADAPT Functional Medicine Practitioner Training Program because you know, I just saw that there was a, a huge demand for functional medicine clinicians that wasn't currently being met. And there's some other, you know, solid training programs out there, but none that really actually provided people with the, the, the real clinical skills that they needed to treat patients in the program itself. So I'm a very 
practical person and a kinesthetic, you know, like a, a person that likes to learn through experience and actually doing things. And some of the existing programs were, were much more didactic in nature. So what that means is they're, they're more kind of academic. They provide a lot of great information on the theory of functional medicine and, 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 you know, uh, the background, the, the mechanics, et cetera, but they don't provide, they don't actually prepare people for how they're going to do it when they go to their office on Monday morning and see the patient, <laughs> what tests are you going to order? What, how are you going to interpret those tests? What treatment are you going to prescribe on the basis of that? Uh, how are you going to set up your practice? What systems are you going to use to run it? All of these things are what really, this is where the rubber meets the road, right? Yeah. That's, that's really what determines how successful you will be or not be in your practice. And so when I created the program, it was really with an attempt to answer the question, what would I have wanted, you know, mm -hmm. to, to learn in, instead of, you know, I had to do it sort of like Mr. Miyagi style, um, from karate, little karate kid all of this you, stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like apprentice style, you know, I apprenticed with different practitioners. I, I learned through books. I went to workshops and seminars. Um, I, I interned, you know, I, I, I pieced it together and, and that, you know, there's something to be said for that, but it took a long time and there were a lot of missteps and a lot of rabbit holes and a lot of, you know, wasted time and energy and effort. And so, uh, you know, I came away from that experience thinking it would, it'd be really cool if there was just a 12 month program that taught you, you know, 80% of what you needed to know to really like be, have a successful practice right when you finish the program. And that, that was really the, the, the foundation of the adapt functional medicine practitioner training program, which we launched as you know, Tracy, back in 2016, we've trained over 600 clinicians in I think 24 countries, is it? 28 countries around the world. Mm -hmm. um, so this is not just a US-based thing. Uh, functional medicine works everywhere in the world. I mean, there's some, obviously some different considerations in different countries. And the feedback has just been, I mean, that's been one of the most gratifying uh, things that I've ever done in my career. Like when I, when we go to conferences or, you know, run into people and hear from doctors who've been and, and other practitioners who've been through the program and just the way that it's transformed their practice and their lives. Um, it, it's, it's what helps me, you know, what gets me out of bed excited. One of the many things that gets me out of bed excited in the morning is just knowing the impact that we've had there. That and a good snow day, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's true. All part of a balanced life and yeah, all, exactly. you know, it all like this goes back to what we were talking about in terms of flexibility. Like yeah. I can, I can go out and go skiing for an hour or two, a few days a week because I'm not working in a job, you know, I'm not in, in a grind for 50 or 60 hours a week doing yeah. only patient care. Yeah, I think, you know, my personal experience, I had, you know, gone through a, a program also before going through the ADAPT practitioner program and before you and I sort of um, started working together. And that's really, they kept saying, well, you're going to be able to start, you're going to be able to walk into your office and know exactly what to do on Monday. And I kept going, am I missing something? Because I really genuinely do not know what to do on Monday. I understand the concept of all of this, but I don't have any tangible instructions, any tangible information on actually what to do. And that is, you know, once I took the, pre the adapt functional medicine training course, I was like, Oh, okay. 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 This starts to make a lot more sense. There's a framework. I know exactly how to approach a patient. I know exactly what patient, what um, labs to order. And then the most important part is like what to do after that lab result comes in, I don't know how many patients have brought lab results to me from other doctors or they're like, well, they agreed to run this lab, but they don't know what to do about it. Like they don't know what to do with that lab result. And so they just said, here you go. I'm sorry. I don't know like how to interpret this. And they end up back at my office eventually because they have five different labs that no one knows what to do with. And, um, that's really the framework I think that the ADAPT program provides. And that's the feedback that I've gotten from practitioners. It's like, I know exactly what to do. I know exactly what to order. And you have this community of ongoing graduate support and other fellow alumni that you can also pull and you can ask them who else has experienced this? Who else has seen this? I have this case that I'm having trouble with. 
What should I do about it? So you have this group and community of people that are just as passionate as you and have had the exact same framework and education as you, and you all get to kind of be this investigative um, community together. And that's really what's fun and what has been nice to watch and see. So that's what I like. Yeah, that's a really critical part of it. And, you know, I, I think there's some other aspects that are probably worth pointing out. Like the, the program is built around what works and what gets the best results. So it's not dogmatic. It's really like, what have I learned from 15 years of, of practice? And, and then you and many other people who've contributed to the program collectively, we're talking about 50 years of mm -hmm. collective clinical experience. Uh, you know, for people who follow my work for any length of time, they know that I'm, I'm very research and evidence-based, but I'm also very practical and non-dogmatic. So you know, I don't get hung up on one particular theory or idea. I'm more interested in what can actually help patients. And that translates into, you know, what, what tests we teach in the course, you know, what protocols we teach. Um, and we actually tell you the, the, the tests, you know, the name of the tests, how, how to order them, how to interpret yeah. them, what actual supplements we use. And, and there, other other programs don't do this because and this is you know important it's, thing. Yeah, I was going to say it's a really important thing to note. Yeah, we don't provide continuing uh, education credits CME, uh, and the re and this has been a very intentional choice because as soon as you do that, you can no longer talk about specific tests, specific products, supplements, treatments. Um, that actually makes it makes you disqualified from being able to. Uh, provide CME. And so, you know, we've often gotten questions over the years from people like, why don't you provide CME? This is why it's, it's not an omission. It's a, it's not a bug. It's a feature um, because it's what allows us is what allows this is really what turns this program more into a residency or an internship rather than like medical school, because we're actually telling people, you know, telling our students exactly what we do and the idea there is not that they, you necessarily, you know, do exactly what we do, but it's kind of like when you learn an instrument, you got to start with the scales, right? Or if you, if you learn a martial art, you start with the kata or the forms. And then over time, as you get better, you make it your own, but you, you like, it's really hard to learn an instrument without practicing those scales. And it's hard to learn martial arts without learning those basic forms, right? So that's, the difference between our, our program and many other programs. Yeah. And you're learning it from people who have done the exact same thing, like who started at the basics and then evolved and adapted their practice. And that's, what's nice is, you know, I'm constantly updating the program to reflect what we are actually doing in practice, what's working, what's not working. That's, what's kind of nice about, um, us actually practicing medicine and then being able to bring that information into the program. So it's up to date. Like this is actually what I'm doing on a daily basis in yeah. my practice. So I think that's really important um, to stay up to date <laughs> with what we're doing. For sure. Yeah. We don't have a textbook that's printed, you know, that was printed right, in like <laughs> 1978 that we need yeah. to update, you know, that, that is an advantage of these kinds of online uh, curricula because we can update it on the fly and we do yeah. uh, very often. I was going to say too, real quick, is that, you know, the course also offers certification and, you know, I, it's important, I think, for practitioners to kind of have this recognition of completing this 12 month course. Um, it's full of these weekly lessons. You've got quizzes. Um, we have live Q and A's where you're able to speak to faculty ask and answer questions um, throughout the course. And then we also have, you know, building this framework, you get patient handouts that you are able to brand. So you can brand them with your practice um, logo. There's over 50 of those. So you don't have to do the work. That's the whole point um, is to be able to use that structure. Um, and then we also have like clinician handouts, which are kind of like quick to the point, key takeaway, review handouts that you can go back and be like, what was it that they said about this one thing? Yeah. You can just go back and check that clinician handout. Um, and then we have the other pieces that we talked about, like nutrition, lifestyle training, practice management course, which is kind of a big piece of this is 
how do I start my own practice? Where do I even begin? How do I run a practice, a functional medicine practice? And there's a whole course dedicated to this kind of turnkey practice management system that you'll learn. Um, and we also have a really great marketing course. It's a bonus course. It's like a $4,000, I think, value, 12 weeks. You can use it at any time. And it teaches you how to market yourself in this community, how to market yourself to patients, to get patients, good patients that are, you know, here or dedicated, want to show up um, for you and for this practice. And then also how to make yourself hireable to in this community. Um, so it's just fun. I think there's a lot of stuff. And then we are also, like I said, offering certification. So by completing this course and the quizzes and the final exam, you'll be able to call your yourself a um, certified functional medicine practitioner and tell people about it. Yell it from the rooftops. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So Tracy, we, uh, we have an enrollment that's coming up here. Yeah. So September 23rd enrollment opens and it'll be going for about two and a half weeks, um, September 23rd through October 15th. And that cohort is scheduled to start on October 15th. It's the 12 month course. So it'll be October of 2022 to October of 2023. And um, we are going to have an informative Q&A session on October 4th at 1 p.m. Pacific time um, with Chris and I. And so we'll be there and asking any questions um, that you have about the program. Is it the right program for you? You know, is it the right time? Anything you need, we are there to answer. And um, we'll also be having that registration link on um, the practitioner page. We're going to give you the links here in just a minute. Um, so yeah, you can log on, um, come and join us. We'll at, answer questions for you. There may be a little bit of a discount code there for you um, that you can use when you do enroll in the entire program. So uh, Chris, do you want to tell them the link where people can go and find more information? Yeah, to find more info, sign up for that session, just learn more about the program. It's uh, cresser.co slash practitioner. So that's cresser.co slash practitioner. So yeah, thank you, Tracy, for joining me. I, I hope those of you who are newer to functional medicine got a lot out of this, um, you know, both uh, practitioners, healthcare professionals, and um, just individuals looking to improve their health. And, um, you know, if you are an individual and you're, you're looking for uh, someone to work with, uh, as I said, we've trained six, over 600 practitioners around the world. Uh, if you go to crescerinstitute.com, you can click on find a provider and you can look for uh, somebody that we've trained that might be in your area or actually also, you know, a growing number of, of clinicians are working virtually now. Uh, that is one of the uh, side effects, if you will, of COVID. Um, it, it really kind of opened that as a possibility uh, where it, in places it wasn't maybe available before. So thank you everybody for listening to this. Thank you, Tracy. Keep sending your questions in at chriscresser.com slash podcast question, and we'll see you next time. When I find a company that I love and I think you'll love, I do my best to support it and help it grow. Sometimes that means just getting the word out through my podcast, emails, and social media channels. And other times that means investing in the company or joining their advisory board. If you're hearing this message, it means that I'm either an investor or advisory board member of a company that is mentioned in this podcast episode. I only invest in or advise companies with a mission and products that I truly believe in. And I hope you benefit from learning more about them and how their products can improve your life. That's the end of this episode of Revolution Health Radio. If you appreciate the show and want to help me create a healthier and happier world, please head over to iTunes and leave us a review. They really do make a difference. If you'd like to ask a question for me to answer on a future episode, you can do that at chriscresser.com slash podcast question. You can also leave a suggestion for someone you'd like me to interview there. If you're on social media, you can follow me at twitter.com slash chriscresser or facebook.com slash chriscresserlac. I post a lot of articles and research that I do throughout the week there that never makes it to the blog or podcast, so it's a great way to stay abreast of the latest developments. Thanks so much for listening. Talk to you next time.